Hello and welcome to Let's Play Disco Elysium, The Final Cut, with me, Bring It On. Disco Elysium was initially released on October 15th, 2019. It was developed and published by Zom, a Z-A slash U-M. We're playing the Final Cut edition of the game, which is a major patch that just came out today, March 30th, 2021. Uh, the Final Cut includes new political vision quests, new characters, new clothes, new cutscenes, full controller support, and full English voiceover, or voice acting. Which is good news for you guys, because you won't have to listen to me read everything in the game. I will still read everything that's not voice acted, as I tend to do. But I've been looking forward to this game for a long time, since it was announced, I believe, or shortly thereafter. I've done a very good job of keeping everything spoiler free, so I'm going into this completely blind. I have no idea what to expect, and I am really excited. Uh, before I jump into a new game, I do want to point out just how striking this main menu is. So normally when I think of, like, video games with extremely memorable main menus, I think of like Halo, Dragon's Dogma, Kingdom Hearts, you know, Baldur's Gate. Those games, it's, it's the soundtrack that pulls you in. Here, the soundtrack is good, but it's, I think it's the visuals that really pull you into it. I, I stared at this for like 15 minutes before I started recording. It's just, it's a really pretty main menu. I jump into a new game, select an archetype. We have the thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts, comes up with original ideas. Uh, sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality but unstable, might begin to lose his mind. Then physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done but dumb as a rock. I'm gonna create my own. Alright, so we have intellect, psych, physique, motorics, um... Should I just go for like a well-rounded character? I mean, the scores are so low, I don't think there's any harm in just being well-rounded here, right? I don't know. I have no idea what I'm getting into. Alright, should I read all the info or just stick to the overview? That's why I read all the info, right? It's gonna take a long time if I read through all of this. All right, well, let's start with logic. A cool for analysts, pure rationalists, obviously logicians. Logic urges you to analyze the living daylights out of the case. It enables you to piece evidence together, detect inconsistencies in statements, and impress everyone with your astonishing conclusions. It's the bread and butter of many a detective. At high levels, logic will be able to solve even the most complicated puzzle. Uh, you will be very proud and thus susceptible to uh, intellectual uh, flattery, not battery, jeez. For those blinded by their own brilliance, often miss important clues. With low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving even the simplest puzzle. Even if you find the pieces, good luck putting them together. Encyclopedia. Cool for thinkers, historians, trivia freaks. Encyclopedia makes you a know-it-all, turning your mind into a database of facts. It enables you to draw on these facts innately, offering a wealth of background knowledge to all things related and unrelated to your uh, case. Who knows when the history of cigarette brands will provide the breakthrough you need to arrest a murderer, when the knowledge of pre-revolutionary guns might save a life. At high levels, Encyclopedia shares this wealth of knowledge to an almost overwhelming degree. While it may give you uh, crucial breakthroughs, it more often will clutter your mind with useless tidbits. With low levels of Encyclopedia, though, you'll be forced to work with only the clues in front of you. Without any background knowledge, uh, copying is going to be tough stuff. I'm tempted to put a point into this. I am a uh, historian. Or at least working on that. Uh, rhetoric, cool for ideologues. A conversationalist would be politicians. Rhetoric urges you to debate, make intellectual discourse, nitpick, and win. It enables you to break down arguments and hear what people are really saying. You'll spot fallacies as soon as they're used. What exactly did the waiter leave out of their testimony? What was the dancer trying to divert you from? What was that double entendre, entendre intended? Or did you just get an accidental lead? At high levels, rhetoric will make you an impressive political beast, one whose beliefs are impenetrable. Which is to say, one whose mind will not change, one who will calcify. With low rhetoric, though, you'll have a hard time shooting down any argument. Nailing people to their testimonies will be nay impossible. So I'm sort of like in intellect more than the rest. Let me go back. 
I'm gonna boost this up just a smidge. Great, I haven't read what Modrix does yet, but so far I'm liking intellect. Why drama? Cool for undercover cops, thespians of the stage, psychopaths. Drama urges you to treat the world as a stage, and on it to perform. It enables you to lie, to concoct the most elaborate and wonderful stories, to take on ingenious pers personas and perform acts of stagecraft in an entertaining amalgam of forebury and deceit. As well, it enables you to see through would-be actors and their false antics. If they lie, you'll know. Immediately. At high levels, uh, drama may render you an insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia. For know the world as a stage is to know the truth as a vanity. However, the flow drama you cannot lie, or discern when others lie. And a cop who can't do either is a cop who's soon going to be lying six feet under. Conceptualization. For creatives, psychedelic, fanciers, and critics. Conceptualization has a special role it wants you to play in this world. Not the role of cop, but of art cop. It enables you to make fresh associations, to delve into world concepts from John y or Jan Karp's postmodernist uh, Capri to Revichol's arabesque architectural style, uh, Diderodata, and even the concept of hardcore. And then importantly, to add your own contribution to these works. At high levels, conceptualization makes you go big, perhaps too big. It is ostentatious, demanding grand displays. While live life when you can throw yourself into a live volcano. At low levels, however, you'll be unable to see the world in a creative light. You'll be unable to contribute to conversations in an art gallery. Only boring people invite you to their dust parties. Visual Calculus For forensic scientists, tactical fighters, math-minded people. Visual Calculus versus you not only in the laws of the state, but the laws of the nature. It enables you to create virtual crime scene models in your mind's eye. You'll see how bullets shattered the glass. Yeah, how a bullet shattered the glass, and from that trace its trajectory with mathematical precision. You also count so many footprints, and at a glance discern shoe size and design, as well as the height, weight, and gender of the one who wore them. At high levels, visual calculus makes the world reveal its secrets to you. But you may be so absorbed by your mind diorama that you don't notice as crooks steal your pants. However, at low levels, your mind's eye will be blind. Reconstructing crime scenes will be difficult without outside help. Volition Cool for sane people, well-adjusted cops, the non-suicidal. Volition urges you to be a good guy, to others and to yourself. It enables you to resist temptation, be it in a bottle, between a pair of legs, or at the end of an iron barrel which promises oblivion. Volition gives you the will to finish the investigation, improving your morale, one of the two health pools in the game. At high levels, Volition makes you hyper sane. When you're about to get funky, it keeps you normal. It's a bit of a party pooper. At low levels, however, you'll have little morale. Without it, you'll be a profoundly unstable cop, uh, falling apart at the seams as you make irreversible mistakes. Inland Empire. Cool for dreamers, paranatural investigators, and mental creators. Inland Empire is the unfiltered wellspring of imagination, emotion, and foreboding. It enables you to grope your way through invisible dimensions of reality, gaining insight into what, into that in, which, which sight can't see, jeez. What's really going on? What do these enigmatic riddles mean for the world fate? At high levels, Inland Empire animates the inanimate. You have conversations with your clothing, conversations that may change the course of the investigation if you're not thrown into the loony bin first. With Low Inland Empire, however, you'll be the void of imagination and character. And then how will you shape the cosmos? Empathy. Judges of character, interviewers, interrogators. Empathy breaks into the souls of others and forces you to feel what's inside enables you to notice crucial social cues others may miss. Perhaps a hidden sadness you could coax out a little more. A strange joy from someone who should be brave, bereaved. Or hidden resentment that could return to harm you later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in the other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to relieve their anger, and be an even more unstable cop. With low empathy, however, you'll be an ungainly beast, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. Authority. Leaders, experts of psychological warfare, respect junkies. Authority urges you to assert and reassert your dominance over those around you. It enables you to understand the power dynamics of groups of thugs, know how far you can push a perpetrator, and how to establish control of situations. At high levels, authority demands respect. Even a perceived slight could send you into knee-deep or knee-breaking mode. With low authority, however, you're forever in awkward situations, like when you suffer psychological breakdowns after you yell at teenagers and they laugh at you. <laughs> 
Esprit de corps. Cops, cop aficionados, pretend cops. <laughs> Esprit de corps is the very spirit of policing, the cop guys. Enables you to understand your blue souled sisters and brothers, not only by picking up subtle signals from your partner, but by witnessing flash sideways scenes as they play out in your precinct. At high levels, you'll be the very heart of the police force, not only willing and able, but obliged to take a bullet for your partner. However, without Esprit de corps, you'll be flying blind able to understand discreet remarks colleagues make in high-stakes situations. Remarks that might just save your life. Suggestion. Diplomats, charmers, sociopaths. Suggestion urges a soft power approach. If people think they want what you want. You've already won. The skill enables you to implant ideas into the minds of others. You can make the citizens like you more. You can make gangsters turn on each other, too. Many crime rings have been broken by just a little doubt, after all. At high levels, suggestion makes you affable to everyone and more resistant to their charms in turn. But all that schmoozing and oozing charm will make you slimy. And you'll know it, even if no one else does. With low levels of suggestion, though, you'll have difficulty getting any kind of report with others. You'll be alone, both during the day and at night. Right, physique. Endurance. Cool for fighters who can take a hit, lookouts who don't sleep, and human batteries. Endurance is your metabolism and circulatory system. It improves your health, one of the two health pools in the game. It enables to survive being a cop. Who cares if you can't aim a gun, if you can't take a few bullets? Why be afraid of drugs that hurt your health if you're a very, very healthy man? <laughs> At high levels, endurance enables you to take a few knocks to the head, enjoy a greater quantity of drugs, and shake off a few cardiac arrests. It makes you a powerful man, who looks down on the weaklings who can't keep up. However, cops with low endurance are likely to struggle. The body is a frail or is frail already, and the flesh of a cop will often be tested. If it doesn't pass, it dies. Pain Threshold Unstoppable fighters, guys who won't die, and masochists. Pain Threshold ignores damage so you can't push on, blooded and crawling to the bitterest end. It enables you to negate damage you would otherwise take. Even mental pain, heartache and loneliness. In fact, these things have become a thrill you seek out and perversely revel in. At high levels, Pain Threshold turns in on itself in a seriously unhealthy way, with full-on self-destructive behavior. With low pain threshold, however, you will suffer too easily. Even a slap from a teenager will make you whine and complain. Physical Instrument uh, Muscle men, bare knuckle brawlers, and gym teachers. Physical instrument is not only your muscles and your skeleton, it is your ability to use them effectively. It enables you to do push-ups, sit-ups, knockout punches, and 360 degree spin kicks. It's a one-size-fits-all solution to thriving and surviving in a physical world. At high levels, physical instrument breaks doors, chains, and bones. It makes you laugh at the namby pansies who can't. You'll be manned up, encouraging others to curl iron until they're manned up too. At low levels, however, you'll have a hard time arresting anyone who isn't infirm or already dead. Indeed, engaging in physical confrontations could leave you in either state. These are all extremely well written. I'm glad I decided to, uh, to read the info instead of just the overview. Electrochemistry. Cool for high flyers, party enthusiasts, cops who need lightning. Electrochemistry is the animal within you, the beast longing to be unleashed to indulge and enjoy. It enables you to take drugs with fewer negative side effects. It also enables you to better investigate lurid matters if you need to understand a chemical breakdown, or talk to someone blasted out of their mind, or understand sexual dynamics. Electrochemistry is there to guide you. At high levels, electrochemistry makes you a man of unrestrained pleasure, an unrepentant Lothario who leers at people with a bottle of speed and a plastic bendy straw in either hand. With a low electrochemistry, you'll be too innocent to be effective. Without a working knowledge of drugs and sex, the city will be difficult to understand. And Shivers. City lovers, the wisest of the streetwise, the genuinely supernatural. Shivers come when the temperature drops and you become more keenly aware of your surroundings. It enables you to hear the city itself, to truly belong to the streets, it is a supernatural ability. Old wrongs play out in present time. Scenes across the city happen in front of you. But who is speaking to you? At high level, shivers may make you seem mad to the outside world. As you listen to the city, you don't listen to others. Your superiors may begin to worry. With a low shivers though, or sorry, with, with a low shivers, though you'll seldom hear the city speaking to you. If you cannot hear it, how can you ever save it? Half light. Cool for high-strung investigators, shoot now, ask questions later cops, and surprise haters. Half-Light is your flight-or-fight response, or fight-or-flight response, I said that backwards. 
enables you to sense the way situations are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart. Fear that urges you to act before it's too late to act ever again. Fear that makes you frighten others. It's the aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of information out of a witness. At high levels, Half-Flight makes you ultra-attuned to the world. It is, a, it is perpetual fear of your own shadow, of someone else's name or scent. You'll be ready, always, to pounce and physically interrogate passers-by. At low levels, however, you'll find your survival instinct is lacking, and your methods limp wristed. Those who respect balance will not respect you. Alright, then on to Motorix. Hand-eye coordination. Trick shooters, snipers, and jugglers. Hand-eye coordination loves the interactions between you and things that fly in the air. It enables you to catch coins from mob bosses, shoot straight, and understand firearms intimately. Want to know the precise make and mark of a pistol? HE coordination got you, or hand-eye coordination's got you. Want to shoot someone with it? Ditto. At high levels, hand-eye coordination makes you deadly, supposing you have a weapon in your hand. Once you do, hand-eye coordination will compel you to take the shot, even if it's not the best approach. At low levels, however, you'll be even more of a disaster in waiting, because when the gun goes off, and they always do, you'll probably hit the wrong target. Perception. Cool for fine detail, detectives, sensualists, and urban scavengers. Perception wants you to be open to the world, with eyes, ears, and nose working at full capacity. It enables you to take in what others didn't no don't notice. A little wad of bills uh, hid away in the sugar bowl, the odor of a perp, hiding beneath the floorboards, uh, the gulp of a suspect after claiming they have nothing to hide. At high levels, perception takes in e every final detail of the physical world, enough to overwhelm all but the strongest, of, uh, strongest mind. However, with low levels, you're going to miss out on everything. After all, you can't arrest what you can't see, hear, or smell. Reaction speed. Cool for shot dodgers, thinkers on their feet, pinball heads. Reaction speed is the agility of your body and in mind. It is instinct. It enables you to dodge punches, knives, bullets. Also sucker punches of the verbal kind. You'll be more streetwise, never lost for words, or lacking a witty comeback. Your mental alacrity lets you connect little details on the fly, working in tandem with your intellect skills. At high levels, reaction speed makes your twitch reflex freakishly good. However, when your body acts before your mind, instant situations can turn bad fast. You're high strung, overly alert. At low levels though, you won't be the one shooting first, which probably means you won't be shooting at all. Savoir faire? I believe that's how it's pronounced. Acrobats, thieves, and bearable show-offs. Savoir faire urges you to be better than you are. It urges you to be disco. A slip by others in Samaran boxing style, and tumble out the back with unexpected acrobatics. It enables you to move with silent footsteps, to groove to a good beat, and to lift useful evidence off perps without them noticing. Savoy Fair. I think it's Savoy Fair. I've heard it before, I just can't remember how it's pronounced. I'm familiar with the term. It also makes you a cooler cop, whose athletic flair will certainly impress the citizenry. At high levels, Savoy Fair will make you the king of cool. Savoy Fair. Is it Savoy Fair? Savoy Ah, gosh darn it, it's gonna bother me. I have to look it up after this. At high level, Savoy Fair will make you the King of Cool, which is much to say the most stylish douchebag in Revichol. Revichol? I don't know how that's pronounced yet. I'm assuming that's the name of the city we're gonna the game takes place in. Or yeah. And nobody will see you until you're ready to be seen. And then they'll get the full treatment, whether they want it or not. At low levels, however, you'll be a bumbling, feckless cop, able to catch a pair of keys thrown by your partner without losing an eye. Interfacing. Uh, me mechanists, tinkerers, instrument players. Interfacing wants you to connect to machines, to use and improve them, because that makes you a better human organism. It enables you to understand interactions with machines, uh, be that how to repair the motor of a Kinema motor carriage, how to analyze the way a suspect used a pen, or how to refigure electrical circuits. It lets you steal keys off a key ring without being noticed. At high levels, interfacing will isolate you from society. Why bother with people when you can talk to machines? Why bother with things like money when you just pocket that display sandwich? At low levels, however, you have a crucial part of the world cut off from you. People use machines to commit crimes all the time. If you can't understand how a crime was accomplished, how can you solve it? And composure. Cool for card players, military fetishists, and cool people. <laughs> composure wants you to not crack, or at least it wants you to not crack in front of other people. It enables you to put up a strong front. It keeps your emotions hidden from the world and helps you read the body language of others, to sense the cracks in their own composure. 
as well that keeps you looking good while you do it. You rock that disco outfit a lot more if you don't slouch. At high levels, composure makes you tuck your gut in and maintain a stern expression, even lying in bed late at night when no one else can see you, you'll have to keep it up. You'll never be able to stop. With low composure though, you'll always be the first to crack. Every cop's got a point when all that fear and rage comes spilling out. The ones who unleash it don't stay on the force much longer. Perhaps worse still, you won't even make the ranks of fashion police. So after reading all of that, I'm going to go back and... You know what? I'm going to keep this at 4. I think I like intellect being at 4. And then here, I'm probably going to put a point into Encyclopedia. I only get one point? Oh no. Okay. Darn, because I'm interested in having rhetoric as well. I like rhetoric and encyclopedia. I think out of all these, those are my two favorite skills. But we're going to confirm this. Nice, jump on in. Took a little bit of time, but I think it's worth reading through all those so we know what each skill does. Plus, they're all extremely well written. The Furies are at home in the mirror. Is their address. Even the clearest water, deep enough, can drown. R.S. Thomas. There is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ancient reptilian brain. Ever. Never. Ever. Never ever? Ever? Never ever ever, baby. Simply keep on non-existing. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. Well, this is great. Yes, it is. Was that about the X something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic source. It's bloated and shameful. A ball of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness. Of the meat thing. You know, I want to know about the X something. X love. X tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you've suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of allergic zone. I was tempted to pick the first choice uh, because it says Lonzi. That was uh, the tenth Doctor's uh, from Doctor Who. With his little catchphrase. Um, no, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light. I want to thanks for people who don't want to give them to. See, I don't like that either. Yeah, let's go with Lonzi then. Uh, Alonzi, never let me go. All right, nothing down to fuck all Barra. A return trip to the silence, please. Do you want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Uh, don't stop. Keep singing. Sing me the song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. I really, really enjoy the voice acting so far. There's another character up here that I didn't name, the Limbic System. For the most part, it's just this ancient reptilian brain talking to us. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert. Hurting, longing, dancing, 
to disco music. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck, and I'm in it. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. And with it, an ungodly headache. Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound, a clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A caprice to me in the motor carriage. Open your eyes. I guess my eyes. So we have a few things we can interact with. Can I take... It's going to be plus one Esprit de Corps. A uh, Disco Blazer. Oh, come on. What's this? It's going to be minus one to Save, save Fair. Plus one electrochemistry, so we'll take that as well. And I automatically equipped him as okay, cool. Just want to make sure we have over here. It's like some shoes. I like shoes. More of a sandal guy myself, but green shoe, left foot. Doesn't say it does anything though. Maybe I need both pairs of or both shoes in order for it to do something. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare cut pants. Uh fish them out. It says whirling in rags on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. Oh, what's that? This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. I mean, I only have a 28% chance of succeeding. Uh, Save Fair. Well, hold on, let me take off the thing that reduces that, which is my pants. Maybe I have a better chance. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan. The other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. All right, let's try and grab the tie. Forty-two percent chance to succeed. You reach out to grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. I'm having a heart attack. Grab your chest. This is bad. Feels like sharp stones grinding in your chest and keeping you from moving. Yeah, I think I just had a heart attack trying to grab the tie off the fan. For quite a long time. Still ongoing. Now is a good time to start worrying. Finally, the pressure recedes. You find yourself covered in cold sweat and trying not to move. Hoping it will keep you from dying. Uh, pull on the fan. The blades come squeaking to a halt. It should be easier to reach the tie now. Yeah, I'm not going to pull the light bulb. That seems a little silly. All right, let's try and grab the tie with 83% chance. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap. It's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous thick tie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. It's a little morbid. Plus one inland empire. I'll put that back on for now. The fan stands still. Should I pull in the light bulb? I probably shouldn't. It's a good way to get electrocuted, I think. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. Uh, let's look out. The morning light hurts your eyes. It's hazy, but you see the ocean and some war-torn buildings. Visual calculus, assess the damage. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window 
came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at them. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. What did this then? More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. Assess the size of the impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door to it should be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me? You mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? <laughs> this person also forced the drinks on you. I should go and get that shoe. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Ooh, five experience. All right, let's finish exploring our apartment. Let's just check out this bottle. This magnum-sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Looks like someone tore off the tape while the song was still playing. Or was playing. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on. Rolling empty. You see bottles in the bathtub. Wine, beer, and sweet liquors. Or liqueurs. Plus one conceptualization, minus one suggestion. White satin shirt. A mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just the outline of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror. Abort. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Maybe I should touch it first. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. <laughs> what? What's wrong? Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. I'm sorry. Touch your nose. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. Well, at least my tongue is okay. Touch your tongue. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. <laughs> Alright, wipe the mirror now. Behold. He looks jolly. He doesn't look so bad. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Of course I do. It's, um... Is it some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I think it might be because I'm a superstar. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No, this is what superstars do. Keep making the face. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face, and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom. You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here it looks like a cadaverous spasm. 
All right, we'll check for a pulse. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive for now. All right, encyclopedia. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Only a 42% chance. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Things were good. Oh, sorry, okay. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, Disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. Right, Revachol. Good. I know how to pronounce the city now. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Boite de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. How long ago was the new? Some 20 odd years. There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression. Looking good on you or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. So I adopted it. Why? Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. I feel the need to add a clicking sound when I make it. Click, click. I guess it's like the finger guns, the... The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry your pretty little head uh, anything else like who I, who am i why did i drink myself into oblivion you have some understanding of the near history of disco the rest is darkness aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a caprice kanema i guess that's it then it doesn't have to be you can swoon over guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to maybe some of the stardust will return. Well, I even have a bonus to this, and it's still only a 3% chance. Shit. Yeah, let's take it. It says impossible. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Since it's part of our portrait, I don't think they were going to be able to actually change this. It's a white check. It says I can always retry it later. It's too late. Like an image on film, the expression belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. All right, let the mirror be for now. Can't do anything with this door. Find your other shoe. Seems like your green snakeskin shoe is missing its partner. You should find it before go you go venturing into the wild unknown. Two shoes are better than one. Unite them again. Then what do we have here? Oh. So this is the only thing that I sort of thoughts. So this is a thought on Guillaume de Million. Temporary research bonus, minus one logic, head in the clouds. Whatever happened to Guillaume Le Million, who, used, who, with his amber mane and sparkling teeth, beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? Why you suffered and suffered? Did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt to the slendering new lines of some starlit Boite de Nuit? Wait, did he already think? Yeah, this has already been read. No. No, we did not. Uh, anyway, 20 years ago. Spare a thought for his great butt, too. Or wait. Maybe he became a police officer in Revachol, West. 
Hmm. Can I take these back out? What do I do here? Bonuses from thoughts. Minus one logic. I don't think I need to hurt my stats this early in the game. So it's not a way for me to interact with this door, it looks like. No actions I can take. I want to. Alright. I'm going to call the episode here. I think it's a good start. Then in the next one we'll leave our apartment, see if we can't find our missing shoe. And proceed into the game. I'm really excited. Either way, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode.